Are you the scientist, the analyst, or maybe you're the artist? As different people made in very, very different ways, this transfers to the way that we actually create as well. After teaching thousands of people how to create and sell digital products, I've noticed a bit of a common theme, which is those who embrace who they are and apply that to the way that they work, they see results sooner and they find it a lot easier. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the eight different creator types and go into their strengths and weaknesses as well. Let's jump in. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jessa. I'm a mum of four and I've been a graphic designer for around 17 years. For nine of those, I've been selling digital products on Etsy and I absolutely love it. I still sell on the platform to this day and I also teach in my memberships. So let's jump in and talk creator types. Scientists are essentially all about curiosity. So they love to experiment, they love to push boundaries in their industry, and they love to research and learn, put that through a filter in their brain, and then come up with something brand new. They are still quite methodical, so they love statistics and they love sort of learning as they go along and making sure that when they experiment, it's fully measured, but they are very creative as well. They are essentially innovators, so they do well with putting more time and energy into less products. And for that reason, they really thrive when it comes to bundles and higher price products. They tend to grow in bursts, so they'll sort of put up a new bundle and they'll get a lot of customers come through their store. And because of that, their sort of their message volume will go up as well. So if you're a scientist, it's important to make sure all of your messages are pre-written, they're saved in Etsy, ready to go when you do have that little burst of customers come through from a new product release. Artists are very creative and they're creative in quite a messy way. So if someone sort of opened up the doors to their business, they'd sort of be like, this is chaos. But for the artists, it feels like home. They are very into being spontaneous. And if an idea is kind of like calling to them, then they love to jump on it and really embrace it. Artists love to create. It's very much the battery that drives them. And for that reason, they have no problem coming up with new ideas and new products. It's kind of a double-edged sword though as well because they can become so in love with the idea of creating nothing ever actually goes into their Etsy store. So they just create, 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 end up with this huge archive of products that never actually make it into their store. So if you are an artist, make sure you set yourself out a framework and hold yourself accountable. It's amazing to create, but it's just as important to get those products into your store. The planner personality type is, as it says, they love to plan and they love to be organized. So planners really thrive when they have a very well-structured plan. They need things in bite-sized pieces and in an organized way. And they love being able to sort of go through the plan step by step and love being able to take a project from A to Z. So planners for that reason have amazing follow through. They're very good at finishing everything that they start because they know where they are on the course and they just sort of take it step by step. The weakness of this though, is that they need to make sure that they do have a plan. If they don't, they can feel untethered and they can feel like they've lost their structure. So if you're a planner and you're feeling this way, you might need to put some time and energy into your plan so you know exactly where you're headed and what your next step is. Our professors are our natural born teachers. And I mean, they love to teach. That's how they get their energy. Now, professors are really good when it comes to content, but they do it in a very special way. So it's not just about writing great content for them. It's about writing content that's easily absorbed by others. So they're really passionate about teaching. That's what charges their battery. Professors love intentional, thoughtful products that are ideally content heavy. So that's their real superpower. They're really good at things like social media posts and eBooks and anything that has a large amount of content. It's really gonna stand out when it comes to other people's products because that content is going to be miles ahead. The downside of this is products like this, they take a lot more time. So they take time sort of putting all the content in, proofing it, making sure it's understandable. And that means that they're gonna end up with less products. So if you are the professor, make sure you draw a line and have some simpler products in there as well. It's really important to have a diversity of products on your store on Etsy to drive extra traffic. And I mean, that's gonna sell the products that have more content and time and energy put into them as well. Perfectionists are all about making things really special and perfect. They have amazing attention to detail. And I mean, I married a perfectionist. I know what they're like. They are very, very good at what they do and they produce things to the highest level possible. 
So the superpower of a perfectionist is they have some of the highest quality digital products on the market. So that means they have a really high conversion rate and it's usually not just the product that's great, but all of the product images as well. The downside of this is that perfectionists take a long time to complete things and sometimes things are never perfect. That's just a reality. So it can be a bit of a process or a compromise if you're a perfectionist to do some things perfectly and other things just are all about the speed of getting them up. So the biggest weakness of a perfectionist is obviously not everything can be perfect. Some things are never perfect. So it means that a lot of the time perfectionists can sort of hold their products and not release anything. It never sort of makes it to their store because they're sort of polishing it forever. So if you're a perfectionist, I mean, there has to be a point that you let go of a product, get it out in the world and just focus on the next thing. Socialites are very social and they really thrive in communities. They're great listeners and they're great at sort of listening to people in a group and taking that information and creating a product from them. So people who create like this, they really thrive off that spark from other people that gives them the idea and then they kind of take that idea and turn it into something cool. So if you are a socialite, I recommend getting into a community as soon as possible. In fact, you could get into multiple communities because that is going to be your superpower. It's going to be a vital source for ideas and it gives you an inside view of what people are looking for. Some of my students who fall into this category, I see them come up with the most unique and special products. And I'm like, I wish I thought of that. So they have a real gift for listening in and tuning into what people want and then taking that information and making something special from it. The biggest weakness of a socialite is they really care about other people's opinions so when you're selling on a platform like Etsy I mean if you get a bad review I see it hit people like this quite hard but as with anything the more that you do this and the more reviews that you get this and I mean everyone gets bad reviews the stronger and more resilient you'll be Analyzers are our detail oriented people who love data and they love statistics so they really thrive off numbers they are really good at creating very optimized products and they're good at sort of reading data so they understand what things mean. Now being able to read data like this, it is a bit of a superpower. So for that reason, analyzers are really good at finding data driven holes in the market and creating products for them. They're also good at incrementally improving the quality of their store. So they look at their data and they're like, oh, this little tweak will make a difference or this split test gives me information here. So they're very good at those 1% improvements that add up over time to a significant amount. Now, the biggest weakness of the analyzer is I see them sort of sit there when they start an Etsy store and they'll just refresh the statistics on loop and they'll be like, I've only got one visit. I've only got this amount of views. I have no sales or they'll be over analyzing things in the beginning. So if this is you and you are drawn to statistics and you love numbers, what I recommend is just focusing on your product count to start with and wait until you get that traffic because it will come. When you have that traffic and you've built up that baseline product count, that's when you can start analyzing your statistics and start implementing those changes. Now, storytellers are very good at telling stories. So they're our natural narrators. They're very good at positioning products as well. So they know how to sort of tell a story and give a reasoning as to why customers should buy a product. Along with this, they're very good at creating content as well. They really love to make sure that their products have meaning behind them. And to a storyteller, I think the meaning behind a product is as important as the product itself. Now, storytellers have a real gift for content and not just any content, but creative content. So they they do exceptionally well with anything which is content heavy, anything which is written, their product is really going to stand out against all the others. Another real strength of the storyteller is they're very good at connecting products as well. So they're very good at sort of telling a story as to why a customer should buy multiple products, how it can benefit them, and they have a superpower when it comes to writing very, very good product descriptions. Now the biggest weakness of a storyteller is obviously things like this take a lot of time. So they tend to do well with connected products, lots and lots of bundles, but they also need to make sure that they don't forget to add those little products that surround the main products that they create as well. So I would love to know what is your creator type? Feel free to let me know in the comments. Are you the storyteller? Are you the scientist? Are you the analyst? I would love to know and bonus points if you wanted to let me know how you use the way that you personally work, your personality to supercharge your digital product creation. Now, I personally feel that I identify most with the artist. I'm quite a messy creator and I'm quite unorganized as well. So I love to sort of like just create and create and create. That's really what makes me happiest. And I do have to watch out for 
being caught in that sort of creation bubble and make sure I'm following through with things. Now, if you are curious about digital products and you wanna learn more, I'm gonna put one of my videos just here. This is a really interesting one when it comes to finding specific products to make. I hope you enjoy it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. Bye for now.